wallaby, and kangaroo. They look so much alike. They're both marsupials, meaning they're born as an embryo and are developed, carried and suckled in a pouch on the mother's belly. And scientists have even grouped them into the same order, Diprotodontia, and family, Macropodidae. So what are the main distinctions between these two and how can you tell? First, size. As a rule, kangaroos are much taller than wallabies. Kangaroos have a lot of length between their ankles and knees, which makes their legs seem out of proportion to their bodies. But there's a reason for that. Their legs are built for speed and hopping on open terrain. Kangaroos can grow as tall as 8 feet, 2.4 meters, and weigh as much as 200 pounds, 90 kilograms. Wallabies, on the other hand, have more compact legs that are designed for agility in forested areas. Although there are many different species of wallabies, they tend to weigh no more than 45 pounds, 20 kilograms, and rarely getting any taller than 3.2 feet, 1 meter, excluding their tails. Another easy way to identify a wallaby from a kangaroo is their color. A wallaby's coat is usually brighter with two to three different color variations. For example, the red-necked wallaby has a grayish belly with red markings on its shoulders. The kangaroo's coat is usually less splashy and more uniform, with muted colors of either brown or gray. Since the two species eat their meals in different habitats, their teeth have evolved over the years to suit the specific vegetable matter they consume. Most wallabies live in bushy forests, where they eat mostly grass, leaves, and fruits. That means the wallaby needs flat teeth to crush and grind up what it eats. Unlike the kangaroo, it doesn't do much cutting, so its crowns are less pronounced. However, the wallaby does retain a single cutting tooth on the top of its mouth for any occasional cutting needs. It also keeps its premolars, while the kangaroo sheds his. The kangaroo, which lives in more open treeless areas, eats mainly leaves and grass. They have curved teeth, as opposed to flat teeth like the wallaby, to help them slice stalks of grass in their mouth. The kangaroo's molars also have higher crowns than the wallabies. Ferret and weasel. Ferrets and weasels are closely related but are separate species. The domestic ferret, Mostella furo, is descended from the European polecat, while weasels include several wild species such as the short-tailed weasel, long-tailed weasel, and Japanese weasel. Ferrets typically have a longer body than most weasels. Weasels tend to have shorter tails and sleeker builds adapted for fast hunting and dense terrain. Ferrets usually sport pale fur with darker facial markings, while weasels may have red-brown upper coats and white bellies. In cold climates, weasels such as the ermine may turn white in winter. Both have short legs, sharp teeth, and keen senses adapted for tracking small mammals like mice, rats, and rabbits. Ferrets are social animals that live well in groups and with humans. Most ferrets enjoy interactive play and are known for the energetic war dance. Weasels live solitary lives. They are active predators that stalk small animals, including birds, fish, and rodents, often storing excess prey for later. Weasels can be found in a range of environments, including forests, urban areas, and farmland. They are territorial and use scent marking to define space. Domestic ferrets, however, are typically housed indoors and depend on owners for food and care. Many people love ferrets for their playful personalities and compact size. They're often described as great pets for experienced owners. Weasels, however, are not suitable pets. Despite their size and cuteness, they are high-energy carnivorous mammals with wild instincts. Caribou and elk. One of the most noticeable differences is in the antlers. Caribou's antlers are typically tall, broad, and sometimes have a C-shaped appearance. Both male and female caribou grow antlers, making them unique among deer species. Adult male caribou shed their antlers after the mating season, while female caribou may retain theirs through winter. Elk's antlers are longer, with fewer branches but greater spread. Only male elk grow antlers, which are used to fight during the rut or mating season. These massive antlers are shed in early spring. Elk are generally larger than caribou. A male elk or bull can weigh up to 1,100 pounds, 500 kilograms, while caribou usually weigh around 400 pounds, 181 kilograms. Elk have a dark brown body with a lighter rump and shaggy mane, while caribou are light brown with white patches and a more compact build. Caribou are known for large-scale migrations, traveling hundreds of miles in herds in search of food. These animals eat lichen, moss, and other vegetation found in tundra environments. They are also good swimmers, crossing rivers and lakes during migration. Elk are less migratory but still move seasonally for food and breeding. During mating season, male elk bugle to attract female elk and assert dominance. Elk herds are usually smaller and more stable than those of caribou. Caribou are iconic in northern cultures and often associated with Santa Claus due to their reindeer identity in Europe. They've been hunted by indigenous peoples for centuries and remain a food source in some northern communities. Groundhog and gopher. Despite similar lifestyles and habitats, these burrowing rodents are very different animals. Gophers belong to the Geomyidae family, which includes many species like the genus Tomomice. 
Groundhogs, also known as woodchucks, belong to the Cyridae family alongside squirrels and prairie dogs. So while both are rodents, they come from different families entirely. Gophers are smaller, usually weighing about 2 pounds, less than a kilogram, with short tails and soft fur. Pocket gophers, named for the cheek pouches they use to store food, are commonly found across North and Central America. Groundhogs are much larger, often weighing up to around 13 pounds, 6 kilograms, as adults, with bushier tails and dark brown fur. Both species are burrowing pests, but their underground homes differ. Gophers dig complex tunnels with multiple exits, while groundhog burrows tend to be deeper and roomier. These burrows can cause issues in gardens and yards, especially when they collapse or damage roots. Gophers rarely leave their tunnels, pulling plants underground to eat. Groundhogs venture out to forage and can be seen munching on plants during the day. They also spend more time above ground in warmer months, while gophers stick to a more subterranean lifestyle. Look for physical traits. Gophers have small eyes, short tails, and large incisors that stick out even when their mouths are closed. They also create crescent-shaped mounds of dirt at tunnel entrances. Groundhogs are bigger, with robust bodies and visible ears. Their holes are often round and accompanied by a mound of excavated dirt. Seeing a large brown animal sunning itself? Probably a groundhog. Termites and ants? Termites and ants differ in three main areas, antennae, waist, and wings. Termites have straight antennae, a broad waist, and two pairs of wings that are the same size. Their wings are longer than their body and tend to be more delicate. Ants, including flying ants and reproductive ants, ant swarmers, have elbowed antennae, a pinched waist, and wings of unequal size. The front wings are larger than the hind wings. Subterranean termites build their nests underground in soil, whereas drywood termites nest entirely inside wood. Both feed on cellulose and can cause significant structural damage over time. They often build mud tubes to travel safely from soil to wood. Termite infestation signs include tunnel openings, discarded wings, and hollow-sounding wood. Carpenter ants, unlike termites, do not eat wood, but hollow it out to build nests. Ant infestation signs include sawdust piles, wood shavings, and ant trails. These ants often nest in wall voids, window sills, or wooden structures like floor joists. Termites feed on wood from the inside out, which can weaken support beams and compromise structural integrity. Subterranean termite damage can go unnoticed for months or even years. Carpenter ants cause damage by tunneling through wood to create new nesting sites. While they don't consume wood, the galleries they carve out can still lead to costly repairs if not treated. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.